morning everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal and it is 17 degrees already in southern British Columbia which would make it 62 in American. I have to tell you that even though we've still had some fires, I'm beginning to see a little bit of break in the sky. I think we're almost at the stage of being able to see the sky again. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we've had some forest and some yeah, wildfires that have been going on and they completely uh, engulf the whole of Vancouver. Not the fires themselves, but the smoke from them. And so we've been sitting in this incredible blanket of smoke for a number of days now. But it does look like maybe we're beginning to get some signs of blue sky again. And you understand, I can't see any blue sky, it just feels less oppressive. So we'll see, let's hope so. And how was your last 24 hours? I was wondering how many of you actually did look at the gifts. I know at least uh, one person wrote to me and said thank you for the reminder. Um, every day is a gift and that is true. We all, we all need to be reminded of that. And as I said, if you woke up breathing, uh, you got a gift. So, I look at today and I think, wow, you know, we're at a stage where we're just two weeks away from VidCon. <laughs> This time in two weeks, I will already be on the flight. So, you can imagine, that is pretty darn exciting and also a little bit scary, as you know. Um, I've been doing what I can to build up the amount that I can walk. And, and it's so funny, I woke up this morning and realized I forgot to tell my fitness tracker that I was going to sleep last night. And I thought, well, I wonder whether it automatically realizes that you've done that by your heart rate. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have to tell it you're going to sleep, which actually is a good thing because my other watch, if you got up in the night to go to the washroom, then it would think you were up for the rest of the time. So it was, you know, obviously they've got to perfect this in watches. They need to have a sort of look at it and go, yeah, how many people do need to get up in the night and how many people are going to forget to turn it on to sleep mode at night. Okay, so having said that, I'm sure that evolution is coming pretty darn soon because I can't be the only one that's falling foul of it on both ways. <laughs> or either that or I'm a doofus and I don't want you all nodding your head saying, yes, you are. That would not be nice at this time of the morning for me. And I have to build up my confidence at this time of the morning. I'm working on my positive. <laughs> this is my positive type. <laughs> Got to build up all those things before I get to work. Uh, lordy, lordy. It's so funny, really. <laughs> so... I look at it and, and go, it's, I think I have an advantage. That's what I wondered. Do I actually have an advantage? And the question that I ask is apropos of the fact that I do the vlog four days a week. And is that an advantage for my mental health? Because for four days a week I turn on a camera and start to chuckle. <laughs> uh, and most days, I mean, where there are a few days where I get a little bit frustrated with uh, certain people on the road, but <laughs> yeah, that's all part of the amusement, right? Because that's life. 
but you know, I wonder whether that's an advantage, and whether that's a bit like my days of being a speaker. You know, that you, if you were a motivational speaker, which I was for many, many years, you know, does it make sense that you don't actually wake up in the morning, all mornings, feeling very motivated? And people don't want to hear that if they've booked you to be a motivational speaker. So, <laughs> if they really aren't interested, oh, I'm sorry, I got you know, the flu today. <laughs> they don't care. They've had you booked for over a year. You know, you better make people rah, rah, you know, whatever. Um, and I can remember doing a speech once, and I was thinking, you know, some of you probably would have some interest in this, some of my experiences of being a speaker. But I remember doing a speech once, and it was for a major corporation. And one of the easiest things to do is to build people up towards the end of a speech in such a way that they will get out of their chairs and give you a standing ovation. When I, it's not one of the easiest things, but you know, it's, it's a doable. If you know what you're doing, it's a doable. And so I never did that. I used to do the opposite. I used to wind my speech down at the end and leave everybody in an um, introspective mode. Because I thought it, and this is just my personal opinion, I thought that it was lacking integrity to just build people up to that rah, rah, rah stage, you know, where they're bouncing off the ceiling and then just drop them. I mean, yes, they're gonna feel good for a moment or two, but then it's going to be like a sugar rush. So I always believed that it was more integrity in terms of my integrity to actually leave them with themselves, not with me, if that makes sense. And I can remember one major corporation was really quite upset about that. We didn't pay you to be introspective. I said I wasn't. I said, I merely left them introspective at the end. And if you go through my speech, there was nothing introspective up until that point. So, and I was explaining my point. But anyway, so they really had a problem. So I just turned around and said, look, if you're not happy, don't pay. That is something that you realize when you are a professional speaker, that it's also subjective. Now, subjective really is about, it's, it's a bit like saying beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? That's a subjective thing. And it was really amazing to me how fickle life was in terms of what you were being judged on. And for 20 years I did that. And for 20 years uh, it was amazing to me how subjective everything was. And so I look at it and I go, you know, life is very subjective. I had a friend who's um, going through a bit of a tough time at the moment. And you know when somebody's going through a tough time, you really want to do what you can to help them. That's human nature. But that's also, in a lot of ways, enabling them. So the best help you can be is to trust that they can fight their way through this and out of it, their way. And that's, oh, I nearly lost my coffee. <laughs> and that's, that's difficult to do. It's difficult not to interfere. But we all want to fix things for people. So I was looking at, at, at the whole experience that I've had uh, in my life and realized happiness to some people is very subjective. People write to me all the time and say, gosh, you've got such a great attitude. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes. But the question is, 
Everybody has such a great attitude if you want to let it out. I mean, it took me actually a long time to understand that thing about, you know, yesterday is gone, tomorrow's not here yet, so you might as well live in the present. And the present is a gift. And we talked about gifts yesterday. And so it took me a long time to really get that. And I wonder how many of you spend your lives wishing something hadn't happened when it already has. And as we've said so many times, you know, we just have to learn to get over that. It's happened. You can't change it. You, know, you can't sit around going, I wish I'd studied more at school. You didn't. And if you really believe that, go back to school. Oh, well, I would have done this if only, you know, I had done that. Well, you didn't. I think it was Wayne Dyer who wrote an incredible book that really made me laugh. It's a very funny book if you have the ability to laugh at yourself. And I think it's called, hmm, it's something to do with Uranus, I know that. Um, and it's a whole book about how you can't have the should have beens and the I could have beens or you should have been here yesterday. Well, no, hello, you you can't should have been here yesterday. <laughs> and I remember reading this book and laughing so hard because I did so many of the things that it talked about. For example, it said uh, you know, people say they're scared of heights. They're not scared of heights, they're scared of falling. People are not scared of flying, they're scared of crashing. You know, it's, it's like... Um, it's just a very big eye-opener on all these incredible things that we do to ourselves and how to be a little more honest about it. And I just love the book. I have to try and track it down, see if I can find it on Amazon or something so I can give you the link to it. But if any of you fall into that trap of living in the past or, you know, it'll be better when... Oh, that's the cutest little puppy going on a walk and it was behaving itself so well. <laughs> Don't know what it was. It looked almost a beagle in its coloring, but it wasn't a beagle. Really, really cute. And it couldn't have been more than a, you know, a couple of months old. <laughs> it was so cute. Anyway, where were we? Yeah, I will try and find that link for you. So, I would recommend that you have a look at today. And, and realize that whatever you do or don't do, somebody's going to make an, a subjective judgment on it. And some people will judge it to be good, and some will, will judge it not to be good. You know, everybody will look at what I'm wearing today, and some will say, oh, doesn't that look nice? And some will say, oh, is she wearing that again? <laughs> it's human nature. When you realize that all of life is about these things, and it's not something that they're picking on you people just do this they do it to everybody not just you <laughs> and what is freedom freedom is when you don't care anymore freedom is when you know they're going to be doing that and actually doesn't change your day that's incredible freedom so as I drive to work today I am aware that if you like it's almost, I, I was talking to somebody who was a, uh, um, a strong Christian, and I said, you know, if you're a strong Christian, then, then look at it all as you versus the devil, if you like. Um, and I said, you know, it's like, I spend my life going, no, you're not going to do this to me. You are not going to ruin my day. And sometimes when I get that idiot, that Richard, who tries to you know, cut me off on the way to work, I have to work really hard inside my mind to not let that ruin my day or the rest of my drive. Because it's so easily done, isn't it? We let the smallest things affect our mood. So have a great day. Be aware. Keep looking for the good and the amusing. That's what we talked about yesterday. Be aware that everybody's opinion is just that, just their opinion. It's a subjective thing. It's not necessarily the truth. And work really hard to keep control of your own emotion because in there you have freedom. Keep control of your own emotion. 
even if somebody is screaming at you or picking at you or t doing something totally unfair, one of the worst things that we can do is fight back. And that's a whole subject that is better left to another day. Because when you truly understand it's just their opinion, you don't have to, you just don't have to prove them wrong. Because you know they are. And you can feel compassion for them. Thanks everybody. I really appreciate the company on the drive. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you smile lots. I hope lots of things amuse you today. As I speak to you now, I should report that I managed to do over 6,000 steps yesterday. That's double what I did the first day. So I'm definitely beginning to understand, and I didn't go for a walk. I just did it doing other things, and I really managed to keep it up during the day at work. Um, and that was the whole trick. I, I tried to make sure that I got halfway to my goal by lunchtime at work, which meant that instead of waiting to take things to people a couple of times a day, every time I needed to take something to somebody, I did it. And I did it because I knew it would keep me moving and make me healthier. Good, good point, right? All right, so have a wonderful day, everybody. Enjoy your day, and we'll chat to you hopefully tomorrow. This is Dear Mama Sal saying bye-bye for now.